We'll now have brief presentations on each of the uploaded uh, final things selected by the groups. Each presentation will be strictly for 10 minutes, as I had already mentioned earlier. But it would be preferable if you take seven to eight minutes, so that we have at least one or two minutes of some very quick observations by people. But we all agree that for such group exercises that will be done at the remote centers, we will ask a different peer review group to review the assignments which are done by someone so that there will be less of a confusion, confusion and conflict. So the group zero, Harshad Gune is here. Who is going to make a presentation? Yeah, so Professor Harshad Gune for the group zero. You have 10 minutes, your time starts now. Good morning, everybody. Uh, on behalf of the group coordinator of 1040-1130 and 1230, I am making this presentation on the first problem, the problem number zero. Our problem was pretty simple in terms of introducing the students to the IFELS ladder. Uh, incidentally, when uh, we have just a small number of part, uh, groups, four groups were there, and out of those four groups, the three groups had identical problem, exactly the same problem of finding out the grade of a student based upon the percentage of the marks obtained by he, the student himself. So we chose that problem. Uh, we started off with one of the group has had this nice concept of presenting the learning objective for the particular topic or the particular session. So we picked up that learning objective as this particular session is going to cover the uh, understanding the nested of, uh, nesting of EFELs and also extending the EFELs into the EFELs ladder. So this is the learning objective that we would like to present. We assume here that the students, they are already aware of the EFELs and they can easily write the programs with single if and else statements. So this is our problem statement where we say that you write a C program in C or C++ uh, where the user will input the percentage of marks and we have specified a set of criteria which will determine what the grade the student is going to have. So this particular problem, uh, it, it really does not have too much of a conceptual algorithm design in terms like introducing the new concepts. So we are just explaining here that how you could approach the finding out the grade of an individual students. So we are first reading the marks, then we must also here introduce the concept of validating your inputs. So we are checking that, okay, whether the marks are entered are within the limits. So comparing them with the values zero and hundred as prescribed by the problem statement. And then we are eliminating the criteria one by one. So we are checking for 75. Obviously, those falling below 75, they need to be checked for 60. Those who are not falling, I mean falling below 60, they need to be checked with 50. Those who are falling below 50, they need to be checked with 40 and so on. Now the same algorithm which was written in simple English, we have presented in a pseudo code form. So this is how the pseudo code will look like, where the parameter or the input value to this algorithm would be the percentage which will be entered and then we are validating it and subsequently the pseudocode is explaining the same logic. And here is our program written in the C++. So if you could explain it here, like we would need one variable to accept the percentage. A percentage of can be in fractions, in real numbers. So we emphasize on choosing a float type of a variable. Then we provide a prompt to the user that what he or she is supposed to do. So we provide the message to enter the marks. We read the marks. Subsequently, as per the algorithm, we are validating the marks entered by the user, the percentage of the marks entered by the user. And the logic is flowing as described earlier. We are explaining that, okay, with this, we have eliminated one part that is above 75. 
So for those conditions where the students are having marks less than 75, it will come into the else part. In the else part, again, we need to check for the next condition, that's say whether the marks are greater than 60. Now we have already eliminated the people above 75. So this naturally means that people between 75 and 60, they would be given this rating. If now the marks are less than 60, the flow would fall below in the else part of that, where again we are checking one condition, where now it limits the condition between 60 and 50, and likewise the program proceeds till the last case where the student is announced to be failed. We got several quizzes, so I'm just presenting the uh, two of them. Uh, one is based upon the principal concept of the structured programming, where it talks about in structured programming, the if else, so what kind of a structure it represents, whether it's a sequence structure or a selection structure or iteration. And obviously the correct answer would be the B, the selection structure. So here when it write, so we just provide a straight away feedback as yes, else is one of the control structure, but not the only control structure which could be used. However, you could also specify the other control structures are X, Y, Z, the wrong answers. The wrong answer A, obviously, we need to emphasize that a sequence control doesn't involve branching. So we need to provide a feedback which specifies that, okay, whereas in sequence structure control flows sequentially, and here the statements without branching. And also, uh, wrong answer C, which is iteration control, where iteration control essentially emphasizes that going back, and here in the E files, you really don't go back, but simply execute the block and continue further. Uh, the, Next problem is, we are given some example, numerical example kind of a thing. The students are expected to evaluate it. It's specifically not indented. The reason behind is the people should understand the association of the else with the appropriate if, even if the programs are not really indented. Because indentation really doesn't serve, though it's a good practice to do. And then we are providing the four different options. And based upon the value, the students would be given the appropriate feedback explaining okay, why this is going to be a wrong answer or why this, this particular is going to be a wrong answer and so on. Uh, that's all. Thank you for patient listening. Uh, Hold your class because I am going to request all the members of the groups to kindly stand up who contributed to this thing. So if you can just stand up, all the members of all the groups which did this assignment. So let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would like to thank all my group members for helping me and giving this opportunity to be here to present this. And also I would like to thank Fatak sir and his team that this was a very wonderful experience that I ended up learning so many new things, though many of the things we were practicing, yet there were a lot more for me to take back home from here. Thank you. This is one uh, small thing. I would suggest that you can go back and do this. Please examine each and every sentence of the final write-up. And I would request all the groups which did this assignment should do, because they are all visible now. I will make all of them visible on the, on the Moodle. And try to correct any small mistake that you find, including any mistake in English. For example, I just noticed one thing, that when you say congratulations, you are first class, etc., all that makes sense. Uh, but sorry, you are failed was the word used. Actually, you have failed is the correct English. So from our side as teachers, we should never, we should make sure that everything is corrected as far as possible. So such thing not only here, but in, in all subsequent things, I would suggest that you look at. Thank you, Prasad. The next group one, whosoever is presenting, if they could kindly come up. Praveen Gupta has uploaded it. Good morning, everybody. I am Praveen Gupta presenting. Problem number one on behalf of my team. We are the six members in the team and we have done a review of all the problems which we have received. In the same like case, we, three problems were on the same topic. That was a uh, calculator, which is most widely used for the, all the teaching purpose. And the three groups made the problem statement same as the calculator. One was from the hotel, one is from related with the uh, your turtle problem, and one was undefined. Out of these three, we have done a analysis like this one, 
analyze RC code number, then problem statement, uh, analysis of this algorithm design, what they have written, then code, what the problem we have found, quiz one and quiz two. This is the clear analysis of all these three, uh, all these six projects, and out of that, all were unanimously agree on the project submitted by me, 1181, and my team members. Now I will take a detail of this project. Problem statement which we have finalized, this is the calculator which adds addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and we are using the switch statement to explain it to the students. Number one, algorithm, we are writing it in the text form, we start, then take two real numbers, number one, number two, from the user, Dif display different options. Next, take choice of arithmetic operations to be performed on number from users. Then, if desired operation addition, then perform result one equals to number one plus number two and display result after that. If desired operation is subtraction, then perform a subtraction option by subtracting two numbers. Next, if number is chosen is multiplication, then we will do the multiplication operation and subsequently we will continue. And we have given, if on the division operation, if number two is zero, then we will handle it divided by zero error and draw back the result. Here, care has been taken if of the time of division, if number is zero, we will take care of this one. After that, we have made a flow chart. You can see it, start, then enter value one and two. After that, we have given four choices, true and false, then result of that one, and this is the complete flow chart, and at last we are displaying result and stop of the error. Here, if any error, then display message, and if divided by zero error, then display this is zero. While writing the code, for this we have taken care so enough that only switch statement is used, no other statement or no other command line have been used so that it is easy to understand to the users or our students that they understand the functionality of switch statement. Starting with declaration of variables, then we have defined clearly why we have taken the variables and given a comment there to what the variables are doing there. After that, we are receiving two input from the user. User is entering and before that one, we have given out a statement which is mentioning the enter two numbers. As soon as number is entered here, at C in number one, C two, number is added, entered by the user. After that, a menu will be displayed and we have given a either comment that the menu is, code for menu is written at this point of time. As menu is coming, it is showing four options, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and similarly, uh, adjust to that, a respective sign have been displayed, so that the user or your student can see the sign and select the appropriate sign. And after that one, switch statement is coming, switch and choice, and there are four cases, switch plus, minus, you see, division and multiplication signs. In each switch cases, we have given the what the operation is going on there, and after that, uh, for example, in the plus case, we have given first comment, after that, the result, and the output of the result. After that, break statement given. So, in each four cases, plus, minus, subtraction, division, a clearly visible comment and code has been given and output has been displayed on the screen. After that, it is coming at the last, at the default. Default if anything is wrong is entered, then it will come to the default statement and programs ends with the return zero. In this program, we have used only the <coughs> switch case, nothing else, and a student can understand what is the functionality of switch case very easily, going through the code, reading the comments, and by executing this one. After that, we have taken the questions, two questions. The first question, here we have taken int a integer variable a, then a float b equals to 4.0. In the switch, we are writing a equals to b plus one. 
In the case, case is case 5 and 5.0. We are given slight tricky one, then output 5 and 5.0, and then 1 is default. The output of this will be in compilation error because here we are in switch cases, 5.0 has been used, which is not allowed. Floating is not allowed here. So there is one tricky question. The, in another question, we are writing character ch equals to a, and in switch case, we are accepting its input. Inside switch case, we are using case 65 and case A. Now, the output of this and default. Here, A is equal to the 65. So, in this case, there will be a compilation error again because switch, in the, inside the switch statement, we are using two times the same uh, case because A will be, 65 will be converted into A. We have given the explanation of this one and this is the explanation of A and answer will be the compilation error for this case will be. These are the two questions which we have selected. This is from my side. Thank you for all. Thank you very much. Good effort. May I again request all the contributors of solutions to this group to kindly stand up. Great job. Thank you so much. Before I invite the uh, uh, next person, uh, I would like to mention one thing, that you might also think of setting up a quiz or an additional thinking activity on the problem that you have given or the example that you may give. For example, if the next ladder, I'm talking about the zeroth group, you could easily ask a question, what happens if I reverse the order? of the statements. So effectively, you will start getting each and every class for that person, where every value will be larger than 40, larger than 50, larger than 75, etc., etc., and larger than zero, if somebody has a larger. Similarly, in this particular case, one question that I have is, what happens to the program if when you are actually doing the addition, multiplication, division operation, if the divisor is zero, what happens? That is the second number given, the input value is zero. Yeah. Then what happens to the program is a moot question. Now, ordinarily people won't give it, but it would be an interesting idea to give that quiz and after answer, you give an additional food for thought. What happens if the input value is zero, indicating something else, etc. It just occurred to me, so I thought I'd share it. Thank you so much. May I request group number two to come over, please? Good morning to everyone. On the behalf of seven coordinators team, I, Dhamendra Bhattak with uh, Professor Riji, will demonstrate the overall concept. To demonstrate the concept of while loop and do while loop. So what we have done, we have just taken two different programs. One is for while loop and from some other team team members and uh, second program for demonstrating do while loop for some other team members. So these are the basically coordinators name and along with their group members. First, I will demonstrate while loop. So we, we have basically selected this problem because this problem demonstrates a very practical scenario. Uh, scenario is quite simple, like we have, we all are basically assigned a four digit code, that is our RC code. So in this problem, we will take a number from the user and we will extract the last digit from that number. On the basis of last digit, we will assign a hostel to a particular user, okay. so. Input to this particular program will be like number of hostels available and, num and number of participants. So while loop will iterate, this is basically algorithm. So we'll be, we will be taking input from the user, that is hostel, number of hostels available and number of participants, then while loop gets executed and one by one we will take a participation a participant ID like 1221. We will extract the last digit by taking mod of total number of hostels available, like 1, 2, 2, 0, mod, suppose 4, so the remainder will be 0. So hostel 0 does not make any sense, so we have just incremented by 1. So hostel 1 will be assigned to that particular candidate. One thing uh, which has to be, uh, to be explained is, we are assigning hostel, not rooms. We are only assigning hostels, not rooms, because if, if, you, if you basically, if we assign a room also, in that case we require array. So array is basically different concept which is assigned to different team. So we are not used it. So this is basically code. Code is quite simple, the concept is quite simple. Here we are just taking uh, number of hostels available, then number of participants, then while loop, basically iterate 
नंबर ऑफ पार्टिसिपेंट टाइम्स हेयर इज अ बेसिक लॉजिक हॉस्टल नंबर इज बेसिकली मॉड ऑफ पार्टिसिपेशन आई टी विथ हॉस्टल नंबर ऑफ हॉस्टल्स अवेलेबल सो एज आई एक्सप्लेन सपोज यू है गिवन वन वन टू टू जीरो सो मॉड फोर इक्वल टू जीरो रिमाइंडर विल भी इक्वल टू जीरो बट हॉस्टल जीरो डज नॉट मेक इन सेंस तो वी जस्ट इंक्रीमेंटेड विद बाई वन सो हॉस्टल वन विल भी असाइन टू वन डबल जीरो पार्टिसिपेंट दिस इज आउटपुट हॉस्टल्स अवेलेबल फोर फाइव पार्टिसिपेंट लाइक वन टू टू जीरो हॉस्टल अलॉटेड टू वन एंड सिमिलरली एंड फॉर डेमोस्ट्रेटिंग द सेकंड कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज डू आई लुक आई बी इनवाइटिंग प्रोफेसर रिजू सो थ्रू हिज एक्साम्पल ही एक्सप्लेन ही डेमोस्ट्रेटेड हाउ द वाइल लुक कैन बी यूज एंड वॉट वी डिट इज how we can able to differentiate between the functionality of while loop and do while loop through another example and our problem statement says that uh, to draw that it, the problem asks for a number from the user and that many number of circles should be drawn on the screen and we use the uh, turtle program concept and here what we did was we uh, created two canvases in one canvas we uh, demonstrated the result of while loop and another canvas we demonstrated the uh, result of do while loop and we have taken two scenarios the first scenario was uh, if the user gives an input and uh, three that is the three number of circles has to be drawn and in both while loop and do while loop will draw three circles take the next scenario so if the input is zero the do while loop prints one one circle uh, and the while loop so prints nothing and in this case the result we can compare the result that the precondition is checked in the case of while loop the post condition is checked in the case of do while loop <laughs> so let me invite uh, that that we explain the quiz questions okay so out of uh, 14 mcq questions we have selected two best mcq questions so first question is what will be displayed in an output when the following code is get executed it's a basically while based problem so like counter is equal to 1 while counter plus plus is equal to 5 so these are the like uh, outputs 1 2 3 4 5 compilation error 7 so we have specifically mentioned what should be the output and why and what that particular option is not being the output like first is 1 2 3 4 5 so because of counter plus plus it it will not print this second one is compilation errors because of the semicolon at the end of while loop as you can see while counter plus plus less than equal to 5 semicolon so student may think it it may it may be like compilation error but it is not the case so why we have placed the particular option as an option so we have just specified the reason 7 7 is the correct answer and 6 because loop will not get um, um, will be successfully executed until the condition is false so counter is is like 6 so this one is first problem second problem is which one of these logic uh, logic 6 is suitable to extend the given problem to find the reverse of a number by using while iteration Uh, one group member has. Um, I have to say that one group member has uh, spent more than one hour to form this problem, and he has successfully executed n number of times. So I think that's a good contribution to that MCQ. So this is a problem in which uh, we are using while loop. It's being assumed. So we have not written that while loop uh, again and again. We have just uh, uh, coded the logic. Like digit one equal to number mod hundred and something. So we will be having four options. and after the end of those MC, uh, those uh, options we have basically explained why it is the right option why it is wrong option like in the first one we are taking mod of 100 so it will only extract a single digit similarly second in third and fourth one so this is how we have contributed thank you very much So once again, let me request all the contributors of all the group members kindly stand up, please, so we can acknowledge all of you. Uh, please remain standing for a minute because the camera is capturing all of you turn by turn. Right. Thank you so much. I particularly like the description, which also includes what output you would get, how many circles you would get, etc., etc. That kind of explanation. as a part of our content would be very useful for the students as an explanation thank you thank you sir thank you so group 3 please a uh, very good morning to all the problem was first uh, to demonstrate a loop to the class and for this uh, uh, one of our group members have done a nice thing he has made what is a loop first made a small note a small note first so you can find out what is loop he has described and with a small uh, illustration and all the um, credit goes to this revori daniel he has made this first explain what is loop and then a problem 
out of many uh, problems, we have just uh, formulated one problem. Actually, iteration and loop, this is a mathematical problem and more computer introduction, people introduce this induction method in their class 11, 12. As primarily, we have assumed that we are not going to take it in the first class, as most of the people are opposing that it should be a simpler one and other things. First primary goal was that why iteration and why this induction method has been masked into that iteration system. So we have just designed one story-like thing. Uh, four friends started business with a capital 5,000, 1,000, 50 and 20 rupees each. They are all in the same business. The business policy compels them to follow a business rules that every time they do any deal, they have to follow. Uh, there was one equation, uh, maybe due to uh, this conversion of document, it has been omitted, one plus uh, square root of their capital. Write a program to illustrate the situation for n such business deals. Consider capital amount as integer and consider capital amount as float, two situations. When I first floated this, all the group members shouted, this is a complex problem. They will be distracted. And uh, everyone said, why this type of problem is there? And we do, cannot came out to any conclusion till yet, but till the problem is presented out here. So after this, we found out some algorithmic approach as uh, natural, the algorithm was just uh, presented, but the objective. So the objective was to find out the values that what will happen if people are not finding out the induction or iterative method, what, where they're merging, they will miss out. So I'm just quoting here uh, Samir Sahatra Buddhist's presentation. He just mentioned one golden rule and golden ratio. Actually, this is whatever has been said in other way, it's a golden ratio or golden rule. So yeah, there is in our objective, we have used here for those with extra effort, interest, continue reading, that we will be also planning the same thing in our class. Because as Pathak sir also said, the advanced students, they will bore out in the class. So for them, there is a challenging part and those who want to skip it, they can skip. There is a total explanation how the value of phi has been found out with this loop, of, uh, loop iteration or you can say induction method. So this is taken from Wikipedia and there is a complete explanation. So there is a nice thing, if people are starting their business or anything with a large number of capital and small number of capital, this method shows that after three, four business deal, all will be having the same capital. So graphically you can find out after some portion, whatever is capital immaterial, you will be having the same capital. So that was a complex ex uh, explanation. Explanation. Then we try to formulate the program and here it is the program. First we designed the program using array, then many of our members objected why you have introduced array. This is a for loop problem. Okay? Then it has been updated that we have made with A, B, C, D fixed numbers and simple lines of code. But the output is very interesting. When we run the program for iteration of 7 times, we have found after third iteration all of they are merging to 2 when the value of n uh, uh, capital we have assumed as integer. That means after fourth iteration all values will be merging to same whatever immaterial you started with. And more interestingly, if you give a floating value, after 13th iteration, again you are merging to same. That means the convergence problem. So by this, you can both show the loops because the code you have seen, a simple one-line code. But the output is very interesting, which covers the mathematics, which also covers the computation. And also, there are some game theory you can relate with the ability of the students. And lastly, when you go on, go on for this quiz question, the quiz question was like this that uh, after seven such deals, who among the friends will be the richest? If a person understand the programming logic, and if you understand, because many of uh, people are objecting that they will run and they find out, because they are writing during examination, they cannot assume that what will happen after seventh iteration. So obviously the answer is last one. And uh, second quiz question, it was just uh, came in our mind suddenly that when we declare integer a 500 like that, how many big number we can give? Because we have observed machine to machine, compiler to compiler, these varies enormously. And ch uh, students challenge us, sir, what is the uh, number, if this question is coming into our exam paper, that what is the maximum number of n you can give? How we are going to answer? Uh, uh, personally, I have not landed up to any uh, solid question. So these are some of the options. And yet it is uh, open for the audience, even if someone wants to add it up, that what should be the more correct answer. Only at the last, I have given a justification that though variantly it is dependent on operating system architecture and others. But the question is very silly. Integer A, 5 lakh, 5,000, what number I can put? And even if it is a multidimensional array, what should be the landing up? So that's where we have learned a lot. And the way back to our institute is we can make this peer evolution really one of the uh, practice thing for our purpose. Thank you all. And personally thanking the whole team. I would think wonderful work. May I request the contributors to stand up, please? <laughs> Great. My compliments.
Thank Very you, good sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. May I request the presenter of group four to come in place? Well, a very good afternoon to each and every group members and participants who are sitting over here. And uh, I, on behalf of my group member, I'm here to present one interesting activity which we found to be a good enough. So with support and effort of my group members, we came up with some interesting problem. And uh, the problem statement that we have selected for this is that let us consider an auditorium with n capacity people, just like ours, where people are seated arbitrarily in random order. Well, if we take our own example, here each and every participant is seated according to their RC codes. But we assume that we take one auditorium with n capacity people where each and every student or where each and every participant is seated randomly, not in a particular sequence. And we assume that each person has a unique identity code that is ranging from 1 to n. Now, the problem statement is that we need to find out the sequences of identity code of people who are seated at consecutive seats. Also to find out the total number of such sequences. So we simply have to write down a C++ program to implement the above problem to find out the total number of sequences of ID code and in order to display those number of occurrences of those sequences. Now, why we have selected this particular problem statement that it is because that we came upon a very practical application of choosing this particular problem statement. Like I'll ask you to consider a scenario of examination where different branch students, they sit according to their roll numbers and all the branches they sit randomly or in a mixed arrangement. Now in order to search out for a particular branch arrangement of student, we can go for this particular problem statement. So let me first discuss the algorithm design for my problem statement. So initially I'll take the input that is the total number of people sitting in the auditorium and in the next step I'll be entering the ID codes of all the people who are sitting in the auditorium. Now in order to find the sequence or the sequence of the ID codes that are sitting consecutively we need to compute the difference between every two adjacent ID codes. Now, if the difference comes out between any two adjacent ID codes to be one, that means the two ID codes are in a sequential order or they are in a sequence. Otherwise, they do not form a sequence. So for each sequence found, we have to increase the counter by one. And this will give the total number of sequences found in an auditorium. So let's see the program design. So initially, we'll take the input N and we'll just enter the n id codes. Now initially we have to set the counter variable count as well as i to 0 and we need to repeat steps 5 and 6 while i is less than n minus 1. Now we are running this loop for n minus 2 times because the last comparison that will be performing will be between n minus 1 and n minus that's why we are running this loop up to n minus 2 times. So initially we take a temporary variable POS that is denoting the position where we found a particular sequence and initially it is initialized to minus 1 and we just compute the difference between the two consecutive uh, ID codes. Now if difference comes out to be 1 then simply we have to set j equals to 0 and we have to repeat this entire loop until this difference comes out to be a non-zero value. So we'll be taking a temporary array in which we'll be copying all those sequences which are in consecutive order. So after computing the sequence, we simply need to print that sequence and we'll increment the counter by one. So this is the program which we have made in C++. So this program is all about finding the sequences of the number as well as the number of occurrences of ID codes in the auditorium. So initially we have given n ID codes and we have computed the difference between every adjacent ID codes. Now we have used the loop to compute the difference between every ID code and if the difference comes out to be one between the two consecutive locations then it gives a sequence. And 
Once we find a sequence, we have to simply increment the counter by 1. Okay, one of my teammate, uh, Mr. Sandi, will be discussing the MCQs with you. Yeah, good morning to one and all. So here, you can observe two questions, which are optically, one thing is for the representation of addressings, and the second one is for the identification of the addressing value of an array. The first one is, so if you find the difference of the first element, that is, let us consider an array A, where it will be having the ith element. That means the option here will be having A star i, next, a plus i minus 1 that will and the third option is a star i minus 1 and a plus i here in this question if you observe clearly whatever the location which we will be finding will be the multiple the addition of the ith value will be having the perfect address location and whereas considering the second one what is the index of the last element of an array with nine elements that means so initially, if we start in an array, the initial assignment will be start from zero. That's why the answer here will be it's eight. So these are the two questions which were selected from out of 14 questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Again, may I request all the contributors to this uh, problem four to kindly stand up. Thank you so much. Again, I will request all of you, they have as many as 14 quiz problems. They have just presented two. But there is no reason to believe that the other quiz problems are not as interesting or as useful. And in fact, all of this material, including things, similar things which will be submitted by 10,000 teachers, would go, all go into the consortium or the uh, repository of all the composite knowledge that all teachers will be creating. I hope that will be useful to all of us. May I request the next group? Dear friends, we have got a programming problem called the uses of two-dimensional arrays. First of all, let me thank my group members, uh, all the five group members and uh, Professor Patak for this great opportunity. Write a C program to store an image. We uh, selected a problem like uh, an image uh, processing. Here not a very great image processing is done. We have just stored an image in the form of not a bit map but I would say a binary map in the sense zeros and ones are used to represent a uh, matrix and therefore we have created a, an image which is a tick mark. We have done the following functionalities in that to copy the image, to transpose the image, to reflect the image on a mirror placed horizontally below the image, to reflect the image on a mirror placed on vertically or on placed vertically by the side right side of the image. And now here is the description of the algorithm. We just declared the array like this and the binary array is set up like that. It shows a small tick mark. Whereas we used a 20 by 20 array to represent the entire uh, tick mark. We have done certain uh, exercises like the original matrix is copied into a matrix called a copy and then the uh, original matrix is transposed to the uh, copy matrix and then a reflection is made and it is also given to the copy matrix and in each case the uh, result is printed with a proper delay. Uh, I would like to just <laughs> execute this code we have that code we can that be increment you get the different shapes after reflection or transpose uh, reflection on the right side reflection at the bottom and so on now uh, at the bottom of the screen, we see clear and display are two user-defined functions, and they are very um, simple functions which will be very um, enlightening for the students to understand certain things. Clear can be just 24 lines, uh, new lines, and this delay can be just a loop. And using a delay like that helps the students to understand a misplaced semicolon at the end of the loop can destroy everything that you wanted to do. Certain very important things I wanted to or we wanted to uh, communicate to the students are as follows. One, R and C are used for 
I and J in the place of row and column so that students can clearly understand what is R standing for and C standing for. Also, row and column for end uh, values to which this R and C shall ride up to. And here is a code. Uh, the first one, I mean, we, for simplicity's sake, we have just made a copy or a uh, as general one global one and then clear function is very simple uh, 24 lines are new lines are drawn and delete or, or delay function is just a um, nested loop counting too much <coughs> reflection on on the base row is done just by changing the row at the zeroth place and at the nineteenth place, and then on oneth place, and the, uh, uh, continuously ch changing the uh, row values for uh, zero to nineteen. Uh, rest of the functions I am not going to uh, display right now. I am going to the main. See, uh, a very important point is. Uh, stressed here in the main, usually where anywhere a matrix program is given or any array program is given, everywhere the students try starting scanning. Entire values are scanned, say a Zudoku solver, eight, um, uh, 9 by 9, 81 rows and call, uh, 81 values they tried scanning, I have seen that, or given a program A into B, two matrices to be multiplied, they scan all the values all through wasting all their time and then at the end they find it very difficult to check whether the answer is right or not. Whereas a method of hard coding, giving the values into the matrices in the beginning itself and trying to get the correct result, then changing it to a scan of, it will be a very practical approach. Um, here in this case, because this is very big array, it is even impractical to have a hard coded values. Therefore, we have given um, uh, two loops which will be uh, giving the different values for the ones at various required places. So those two for loops actually initialize the entire array. Afterwards, there is a print matrix to understand that this matrix is, is what we expected. Later, there is a copy matrix. We uh, make sure that a copy is al also there and it is also uh, correct. After displaying the copy matrix also, then we go to transposing. After the transpose is made, we immediately display this. At this point, I would like to say there are certain important points which we follow in our place, which is called incremental programming. Many students tend to write the entire program at one stretch and then compile and see what are the errors. Whereas at each step, we compile, see whether it is working and then only we proceed. And that is called the incremental programming, which we follow very much in our place. And uh, various other things are, uh, the various reflections are there. Finally, here is the quiz. Tough questions are asked there so that the students can understand the inner realities behind this um, uh, two-dimensional arrays. First question, in which all ways can two-dimensional arrays be represented in a computer? It can be row major, column major, or A or B, none of the above. Obviously, it is A or B, depending upon the operating system. Question number two, in how many ways two-dimensional arrays can be accessed in C++, where I and J stand for row and column? Hey, IJ, I of AJ, Content at content at a plus i plus j and a b or c. Obviously, all the three are right. A b and c are right. And the third one among the following: in which always a two-dimensional array can be received in a called function as formal parameter. Int a of four int a3, 4, int a uh, boxes, and then integer pointer 4. And you may be, I mean, it, it will be surprising to see that, except the C, all the three are right. I would say we had a very great teachers, very wonderful teachers in our groups, and because of their cooperation, we could uh, arrive at immediate conclusions, and we worked on that. And <laughs> we could not uh, submit it because of the technical problems. I just wanted to explain uh, why 
this problem is a good problem for analysis that is this is an image visual effect is there and a flip on the di major diagonal reflect on the right reflect on the left reflect on the top and so on this in turn will ignite the curiosity of the students still do the <laughs> following like magnifying the image or translating the image to remove a portion of the image or to rotate the image and so on. This in increases the passion of programming by the students. At this point, I would like to stop. Okay. Thank you very much. May I request all the groups to stand up, please, group members? So, has anybody already tried the Sudoku matrix that uh, we are suggesting? No. That's not here. Uh, the next group, please. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Naresh Chaudhary from RCID 1296. I'm here to present the topic related functions. Our problem is very simple. It tells where functions are necessary, why functions are necessary. So we have taken a problem that is computing NCR, permutations and combinations. So here we are going to use factorial function. The formula of NCR is n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial. So there we are going to use factorial function for three times. So this is the algorithm, main algorithm. So where we accept valid values for n and r. So here we, we need to validate n and r. There are three conditions we need to check. n should be greater than 0, r can be greater than or equal to 0 and one more condition is n should be greater than or equal to r. These three conditions should be validated before computing NCR value. So here it is the factorial function. We used loop for computing factorial. So this is very simple and this is our program design. So the problem with the factorial is it can compute up to 12 factorial maximum of because we have taken unsigned long in to hold that value for the result. And for taking n and r we have taken in integer type. So we have taken one more variable ch. So I will explain it later. Now this is a function declaration. It is very clear unsigned long in will be the return type and the factorial is the name and it takes one parameter int which is of type. Now this is the expression that is result equal to factorial of n by factorial n minus r star factorial r. Now this is the factorial function. So initially we take f as 1. So condition loop x greater than 0. This is a condition f equal to x, f star x, x minus minus. Finally it computes factorial. Finally we are going to return f value. Now this is our program source code. Now this is the declaration and in main function we are going to declare nr ch and result which is of type unsigned long in. Now here this while loop we have taken to read n and r values. So while one we have taken inf infinite loop. So here enter c out enter n and r values. So it prompts for n and r. So by using c in, c in we are going to read n and r. So by using if statement we are checking three conditions. One is n less than or equal to 0 or r less than 0 or n less than r. If any one of these condition is true then it leads to invalid n and r values. Now if this is true any one of the condition is true then it prints invalid input values and one more it prompts for do you want to continue yes or no. So if you give yes, so that character will we are reading using C in and again we are going to check what is the input character that you are giving, do you want to continue or not, that is again by using one more if. So if y is the character that is given, then it, it is going to continue, means so next loop starts, next iteration starts because it is infinite loop, again it will ask for enter n and r. If you do not want to continue, then you can press n or any other character, it will go to else, it means exit 1. We are going to exit from program. So if this is false, if this is false means 
n r values are valid values then it is it will come to else so there we are going to write break that means we are quitting from infinite loop so now after coming back after coming from while loop so here we are going to calculate factorial of n factorial of n minus r factorial of r by calling factorial function three times so factorial of n for this this function is called there x is formal parameter and we are taking one f local variable one so we are initializing it to one and while x greater than zero so f equal to f star x x minus minus now it will compute factorial so first initially factorial of n next factorial of n minus r factorial of r finally uh, corresponding factorial value will be written here and this expression is computed and our result will be ncr value now by using c out i am going to print n c r n is n value i am going to print c c i am going to print r r value equal to the result value i am going to print now this is our program so here we are not forcing the user to give n and r values if they are invalid we are giving option whether you want to continue or not that that's what we did and in quiz questions simple question that is formal parameters of the function can be used in the first option is anywhere in the program second option is anywhere in the function third anywhere outside the program anywhere outside the function now the correct answer will be anywhere inside the function because they are defined in local scope formal parameters of a function are local scope now the second second one is so how many maximum redundant statements can a function have so options are 0 1 2 and many so what will be the option can anybody many yes so why it is many means we can write many redundant statements in a function but it can execute only one written statement it can execute only one written statement now this is all about functions thank you sir. Yes. the contributors to stand up please thank you all of you i think as the uh, assignment number increases people go higher up in the physical order is it that is how the things have come out all right Thank you so much. You. I would just like to correct uh, here a, a, a small problem. When you say it can execute only one return statement, it's technically not correct. It can execute any one of the many, so it will execute only one of the many statements. But when you say it can execute only one statement, there are doubts about the capability of C++. <laughs> But thank you very much. I like the idea, by the way, most of the people are doing that, that in the sample program, the validation checks are introduced and uh, the explanations are given. And this will encourage our students to look at, because students generally try to ape whatever we show them. So these kind of things will encourage them to do good program. Thank you so much. The next group is group seven. Good morning, everybody. So ours is group seven. And here we have got uh, four groups working together. Out of these four groups, three have presented the same problem. So before this, I'm taking a biological example to explain the concept. Please go through the slide. Here we are taking a example of a honeybee sound, uh, how it uh, family tree grows. There are some facts. The fact one, queen is a special bee which only produces eggs, but others are the workers and they don't produce eggs. The second one, male is produced by a queen's unfertilized egg but whereas a female is produced when a queen mates with a male so a male has got only one parent whereas a female has got both male and a female together so we are now relating this concept to somewhere here so the green one shows you it's a male and the red one is a female so if it is a green one it is a male then it has got only one parent right now it is a female when then it has got two parents likewise if you look into the number of generations after n generations you would like to count the number of bees involved so for example if it is a generation 3 how many bees were involved there you can get it from the slide generation 3 so it was 2 plus above right so likewise i am trying to add the 
previous iterations into this to come out with the number of bees that was involved in that particular generation. I think from this you can make out what is the thing that I am going to explain since most of you might have known this. What is the thing that I am explaining here? I am trying to explain the concept of Fibonacci series as I said, said no, uh, the other name given to it. Viranka number. Yeah, Viranka number or uh, Himchand, Himchand series. Right. So, that is what I am trying to explain here. So, instead of I am saying that please tell me the 20th number instead of that I am giving the problem like this. Find out the number of bees in a family tree for a male bee up to 20 levels here nothing but the 20th generation or the 20th number in the series. So, this is what the problem that I am going to pose to my students. Now, looking into the concept that I have taken to explain this is a recursion as we all know recursion is nothing but a function calling itself. So, the same recursion is going to be added to my Fibonacci number again the nth number is equals to the sum of the previous two numbers right this is the algorithm step very simple steps. Then looking into the Fibonacci serial, here we have written a program and my friend is going to explain you in detail about this program. In fact, this is a simple program Fibonacci series we implemented using recursion. So, same thing can also be implemented using non-recursion technique and especially non-recursion technique it takes less time but especially recursion if you do not optimize it is going to take longer time. So, that is what we wanted to emphasize for the student. So, there are two different approaches are there. First approach it is going to take a exponential time and other one is going to take that uh, linear time. In the previous lecture already sir explained us how to reuse that uh, in Hemchandra problem sir already told how to reuse that uh, already solved problem. So, in that case what we are doing is second problem is reusing that existing solution. So, that is why it is going to take less time and we wanted to show that uh, yeah, both the functions are being implemented and we will show you the results. So, this is the execution I think it is not very clear, but I uh, will just tell you that in bottom you can see that uh, that first program is going to take about uh, for 46 terms because 47 terms term is going to generate as uh, negative number because it is going to going beyond the limit. So, that is why we are executing up to 46 term the first algorithm it takes about 200 seconds and second one is taking 0 0.05 seconds. So, there is a difference about 40,000 times. So, because basically both are we are going to solve the same problem, but the time difference is 40,000 times. So, this is the magnitude. So, that is what we wanted to more emphasize and in fact, I read uh, the test study that while going through this problem and if you want to go to up to 100 turns and it is going to take about 10,000 crores years. So, that we will have to highlight the students and suppose if you want to solve it in linear time, it will not, uh, it, will it will take only few milliseconds. So, that is the time gap. So, that we wanted to emphasize using this and we use two different approaches. And next we have two keys problems and basically this is the problem we selected because this is uh, especially by seeing this in fact I also got confused. Yesterday I was thinking that it is going to produce a binary number. So, for given decimal number it is going to produce a <coughs> binary number because most of the time our first year student they solve that conversion problem and uh, but it will not uh, show you that uh, <coughs> binary number it give you a reverse binary number. So, that that is why we selected and B is the right answer. And this is the last problem we selected. This is a power function. In power function, this is a specialized power function. It computes only square, cube, fourth power like that. And this is the simplified one and especially for beginners. So, this might help them. And we wanted to test that after nth, after kth iteration, how many times that procedure is being called. And C is the correct answer. Okay, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Very good. Thank you very much. May I request the contributors to stand up, please? It's a good problem. I must compliment our friends for uh, thinking about illustrating a very important concept that recursion is extremely important to conceptualize solutions, but terrible to implement <laughs> the kind of uh, execution time that you would take. Thank you so much. Uh, the next group is a uh, oh, group is good afternoon friends my topic is pointers and uh, I am very thankful to my team members Rashmi, Edwin, Raut and Gladys. The first thing is what is the problem definition? It is a very simple problem definition because I am uh, going to write the pro program for a simple telephone directory. This telephone directory will have 
टू एट्रीब्यूट दैट इज द नेम ऑफ द सब्सक्राइबर एंड द नंबर ऑफ द सब्सक्राइबर द ओनली थिंग इज स्टूडेंट शुड गेट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ पॉइंटर हाउ टू गेट द पॉइंटर एंड हाउ टू इलेस्ट्रेट द कंसेप्ट ऑफ पॉइंटर बाय यूजिंग दिस एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट थिंग वॉट इज अ पॉइंटर द पॉइंटर द वेरिएबल विच स्टोर्स द एड्रेस ऑफ अनादर वेरिएबल देन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंटीजर एक्स इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर दिस इज द वेरिएबल डिक्लेरेशन एट दैट टाइम कंपाइलर विल असाइन मेमरी टू दिस वेरिएबल दैट इज द वेरिएबल इज नेम गिवन टू द मेमरी लोकेशन एंड एट दैट मेमरी लोकेशन द फोर्टी फोर विल बी स्टोर्ड एंड दैट मेमरी लोकेशन विल हैव सम एड्रेस दैट इज फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन सिक्स फोर फाइव सो हाउ पॉइंटर वर्कस pointer is a variable storing an address as it is then for example i is equal to 5 this is the variable declaration integer uh, star pointer is the pointer of type integer and which stores the address of variable i when i am um, you know printing the value of i it will print 5 but when i am printing the value of star pointer that is uh, star ptr it will also uh, print the value 5 because it is storing the address of uh, i variable that is shown in this figure next this is the actual problem design name array is given and phone uh, number array into that there are two fields that is the one first field is uh, address and second one is value the pointers are pointing to each location in name array and in uh, second the pointer 2 is used for the uh, traversing purpose this is the simple algorithm where you are we are getting the name and phone number from the user we are storing that in array and the input will be name to be searched or phone number to be searched in that uh, directory if the value is a name compare the name with each entry uh, of the name in the list uh, with the uh, help of pointer and uh, if match found we have to display uh, the respective phone number and if it is not then display person not found the same thing with the phone number also i don't want to repeat this next program implementation uh, here the most important thing is Uh, long int phone number uh, and uh, character name name is uh, uh, array used for the storing the person name and yes name is used for the name to be searched in the directory the same thing yes phone is used for the phone number to be searched in the directory pointer 2 is pointing to a phone number and uh, pointer 1 is pointing to the name of the person that is for, to the first array then for loop is used for taking the input from the user and that is stored in the array of name and phone number next then uh, by using the next for loop the all the addresses of the first array are assigned to the pointer first that is uh, for the traversing purpose and next the same thing pointer 2 is having the base address of the phone number array next we are taking the uh, name to be searched in the array and uh, that is compared with the first uh, entry that uh, in the first iteration of the loop that is compared with the first entry in the directory next uh, if it is found then uh, loop will be break otherwise uh, the pointer will be traversed to the next entry um, if i is equal to n it means that uh, we have to traverse the whole directory that is Uh, uh number of comparisons will be n uh, that is uh, if the k is equal to 0 k is number of occurrences of the entry in the array is equal to 0 uh, then n is equal to k this is the algorithm for linear search we have implemented th those thing here then the same thing is happening for the phone number we are taking the phone number input and uh, um Uh, we are checking whether that phone number is uh, present in this directory with the help of pointer that is pointer 2 we are going to increment the pointer 2 plus plus it uh, denotes the uh, increment in the address of the uh, address that is stored by the pointer 2 uh, next is uh, we are taking the choice from the user whether he uh, want to uh, repeat the same thing over here 
this is all about the program next quiz is it's more simple uh, quiz integer a is having 10 20 30 40 this is the array uh, a uh, integer star p p is equal to a see out we are printing the value of star p any guess about this yes this is very simple answer address of first element so it is a 10 and it will not be 20 30 or 40 next question it is having the more level of uh, difficulty it adds the difficulty in the first program integer a is equal to 10 20 30 40 integer star p p is equal to ampersign a of 0 that uh, instead of this you can write p is equal to a it will store the base address see out star plus plus p see out plus plus star p okay the answer is 2021 okay then first uh, option is correct and uh, others are wrong answers so thank you very much thank you may i request the contributors to stand up please thank you good job it just occurs to me that it might be a good idea to use some extremely simplified animation it's not a character animation or something uh, while explaining both the movement of array indexes and the array values excess as well as the pointer arithmetic so when you change the pointer for example the incrementing of the pointer is not by one but as many bytes as the storage capacity that is indicated by the pointer i have found often people don't find it easy to appreciate that concept so you can we could draw those number of bytes and show a counter uh, a pointer changing value and then actually pointing to something else that could be useful but very good effort thank you very much and now the last group group nine good afternoon everybody uh, on behalf of all my group members i am here to present about this uh, topic that is given to us uh, that is a uh, character tree we have chosen one problem here uh, i would like to read the whole problem statement it is just uh, like a situational problem uh, i think all of you are able to read that also uh, arun nair gets admitted to iit bombay so now you may be thinking who is arun nair uh, it is the uh, the person who is uh, whose computer I am using uh, since last five days in the Akash Lab 1. So we have been alerted on one system, so it is written there, uh, he is a junior programmer there. Uh, and a room in hostel is being uh, alerted. The hostel has a R number of rooms, uh, where in each room two students can stay. Uh, there are N number of students staying in the hostel, and there is a Antakshari competition has to be there. So, uh, some group needs to be formed consisting of two participants and uh, the rule for forming the group is that uh, the name of the participants belonging to the same group must not start with the same letter. So, uh, typically it is a string problem, uh, so we have chosen this. Now, uh, as Arun is a good programmer, this task has been assigned to him to write a program uh, which will form n by 2 groups because uh, each group can have maximum 2 number of participants from n number of students where uh, two students name should not be starting from the same letter. Now another thing is that uh, when you will allocate the group uh, one at some point of time it may like that uh, 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 none of the students or some students will be there uh, whose names are starting with the same letter and who has not been allotted any group. So in that case we can go for the second character and if the same thing continues then again you can go for the uh, third character or like that. This is the simple problem, uh, uh, we have to form the groups among the students. Now again we are proposing here one challenging version that uh, two participants must not be from the same room. So again one constant can be added and also another thing can be added, the number of members in a group uh, can be specified by the user. We are considering here uh, each group can be uh, exactly two number of uh, members will be there. So it can be given by the user and accordingly the group can be formed. So this is the algorithm, uh, we have to, uh, another thing what we have earlier done, we have taken a structure, uh, structure of the students uh, where uh, three members are there, the name, the room number and the group number. But again as structure has not been taught, so we have simply taken uh, array here, uh, array consisting of three dimensions. 
and uh, we have to initialize the array. Um, this is a while loop, while not of the student serving assigned a group. So we have to go on checking the character. Uh, if the first character of the uh, first student and first character of the second student uh, are not same and uh, their groups has not been allotted, then assign a group number to them and increment the group number. And uh, so both these uh, for loop here will go on assigning the uh, groups to the students and again we are checking if any unassigned students is there. Uh, why? Because the name of the first characters are same, then again it will go for another iteration and it will continue like this. So you can see the program here. So only one loop is there. We have taken uh, one simple uh, what uh, initialization here, the name, the room number and group number is blank. We have initially taken them blank. And uh, this is the do while loop and uh, this is the two for loop. So we are checking. Uh, the character position we are taking here, so this will be incrementing from 0, 1, 2 like this. So if the first character is not matched and that, uh, so we are using the library functions here like strcmp to compare and another thing we have used here that is uh, because group we are taking a numeric variable, integer variable and the uh, array that we have taken is of string. So uh, we have to convert this integer to string. So we are using this function sprintf which will convert this uh, integer to string and uh, we are assigning the group by using the strcpy here then you are changing this group number and once the group is being assigned then we are uh, just breaking the loop then we are checking here that whether any of the student is there uh, who has not been assigned a group and if all are assigned then while not all groups are assigned the loop will continue and to display we are using another function here that is for io manipulation that set w so that the output will be coming properly and uh, that's all this program and these are two again quiz questions are there which is illustrating the strcpi function because strcpi will take that the according to the syntax it will copy this to this like uh, second argument to the first argument so uh, suppose the question is given that you have to copy this uh, hello to str1 but in the uh, function call it is being written str1 str and str1 so this is wrong means str will not be containing any value and the existing value will be overwritten here. So this is logically incorrect. And second question we have taken, uh, generally again this is here the array size has been specified, it is of 16 and here array size is not been specified. So it will automatically take according to the number of characters what is there and uh, we are printing the size, size of this a and b. So it will be 16 and here it will be 6 because 6 characters are there. So that's all from our group. Anything, any question is there, then you can ask. Thank you very much. May I request the members to stand up, please, the contributors. But I would like to raise one question. You have said in that quiz, logical error. So do you expect the uh, compiler or the program being executed to actually print logical error? No, it will not print. So what will it print? No, it will not print anything. It will not print anything? It will actually print a junk in my opinion. Garbage value. Uh, the garbage value. Garbage value. So, so the, the correct choice is not logical error because then people will assume that it will print the string logical error. Here one has to be printed, so it will print garbage value. So in fact the explanation should be that it should print the garbage value and the word garbage may not be clearly understood. So whatever value exists in str one will be printed yes. and not this. So the next question, what if str1 actually has a he or hello or something? Then it will print that. Earlier it will be there. Yes. It may print the same. So it, it, it may not be garbage. In fact, the most dangerous program outputs are those which look correct but which come because of the incorrect reason. Yes. So that's a possibility. Uh, so maybe that last line could be modified instead of saying that last choice. That is logical error. Instead of logical error, of course, the analysis is correct. Thank you very much for this. Please take your seat. Okay, now uh, a couple of things uh, before we break for lunch. Uh, first of all, I want to know your reaction to my using this method of activities in the workshop. 
where group individuals do some assignments, but more importantly, groups do some assignments, and then groups discuss that assignment, and then they come up with some solution. Do you believe that it, it makes better sense to do that? I, I picked up this strategy, I learned it from Professor Sridhar Iyer, and it is exactly like extending a think pair share. In fact, having convinced myself that it is the activity and experiment and uh, practice by students which make them learn more, I thought the same thing holds good for us teachers as well. So if we experience and practice, we will actually learn better how to coordinate the workshop back home. Now, I, I hope you agree that this process has told us what to do and what not to do with the groups of teachers who will come at our place. And if we do a similar experiment with them, then they will also understand better what to do and what not to do with the students. We can only encourage them to do certain things. Whatever they eventually do will be all right. So we'll follow this model. Okay, thank you so much.